How's it going, Shadow? This is me. This is Left Front Bumper. I'm here too. We're here for comms. We're here for Shadow Beef comms. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah, Shadow Beef Productions. And uh, we've got Serenus <laughs> on the uh, free stream, and we've got Loopy with us that is gonna be tracked tonight. So, Fizzle, uh, it's been a while since I've been in the booth. Uh, what are we in for tonight? So, let's give some highlights. Let's start with the thing at the top that's gonna be super duper notable. Um, full entrance floor shuffle, towns mixed in, everything mixed around. Um, everything jumbled everywhere. We've got clamped trash, we've got clamped bosses, we've got not loose items, but we have extra incentive locations. In a lot of our previous tournaments, we have so many key items and only so many locations they can be found in that some stuff is going to be out in the world and we're off. Uh, let's see, what do we got out of white magic? Red learnable life and black magic, we've got ice three and quadex. Ice three uh, quadex and life? This is easy mode. This is, <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. I rolled this seed. I rolled uh -huh. what was supposed to be a Shadow Walker special. This does not look special yet. Now, hang on. I saw max price gold minus five bracelets. So we're not doing too bad. A gold minus five bracelet, otherwise known as cheaply made chain armor. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's it's in line with what gold actually would provide in, in form of protection. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> uh, we do have reasonably priced houses, and we're working with espers today. So we need 28 of these to get into the Temple of Fiends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see where they're at. We've got an early Titan find. Titan living in Canaria Castle these days. We always hope for the Titan wormhole. It's one of my favorite things that can happen in Floor Entrance Shuffle. Um, I don't think I've seen one yet this tournament. Okay, so our first two entrances is not the most exciting. We did get a shard and about 2,600 gold out of those chests up in the Temple of Fiends location. But nothing to uh, write home about just yet. We're going to have to, to cross the bridge or go west. Except that uh, it's been long enough that I forgot that we had a free ship. <laughs> so, not you know, we have... we're, we're boating. Yep, not only do we have a free ship, we also have a free canal, so the number of places we can go out of the gate is enormous. And speaking of enormous, we have soft potions at right around 1,200 gold. That's going to be awkward if we run into a lot of things that are able to petrify party members. Yeah, so soft potions is definitely something that you want to pick up a couple of it's going to make it a little bit tough to do that in this early game and uh speaking of making it a little bit tough we've got gaia which has quake and bracket level seven not really where we want to see those spells land mm, no that, that makes for sad times what else we got in this year armor shot we got an iron four helmet wooden five armor a wooden three shield <laughs> that's kind of an armored fighter i mean that that copper four bracelet's not nothing that'll be great for those mages Mm -hmm. And it's cheap enough that it's worth picking up. Alright, and speaking of towns with level 7 magic, we've got uh, Onrak over at the Provoked location. So, uh, towns available early on, but not the towns that we want to see. And boy, they've got right. the spells that we want, but not at the level we want them. <laughs> and a max price herb for sale out of provoke a location on rack. <laughs> okay, there's there's still hope for this to be a Shadow Walker special now. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Question in chat, what did the minus X on those items mean? So we're operating with cursed and blessed items, hitherto referred to as blurst. If it's got a regular old number in front of it, that means that, um, that means that it's better than normal. That means it has more damage, more absorb, etc. If it's got a minus in front of it, that it means it has less damage, less absorb, etc. Um, so if it's plus or minus one or two, eh, it's roughly normal default values. If it's plus five, it's super duper good. If it's minus five, mm, use it if you have to. Otherwise, try not to. So we have our first real dungeon entrance here in uh, Elfland Castle, and it is a sea shrine floor, and it looks like the sea snakes rolled a bit high on HP. 
Uh, gonna make it a little bit tough to get some early levels, but uh, not completely out of the question. It looked like three ice threes was enough to take uh, one of them down. Mm -hmm. Getting our okay, so our Titan wormhole goes to Melmond. So wormhole, not really a wormhole in this case. Eh, we we lived in hope. So our runners are gonna do a good job of feeling out these entrances. More <laughs> high level towns. <laughs> More towns we don't want. Oh boy. I'm calling that nuke is in that Lafane trap. Pretty much, what if we, we've seen some really, really good spells out of uh, seven so far. Yeah, it's gonna make uh, white mages and black mages definitely a little bit more valuable. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, level seven fade, you'll be able to get a couple of uses out of that on your white mage. And uh, definitely gonna wanna pick up that Brack. Um, you can always use that for Kraken 1, Tia 1, which are a little bit less important in Shard Hunt. However, it still can come in clutch for uh, Kraken 2 and Tia 2 in an absolute pitch. And meanwhile, looking up at Spell's app screen, I saw that he acquired a Silver 5 sword, uh, otherwise known as a really, really good flame sword. Actually, that might even be uh, better, better than ice sword. sword. That's ice or maybe even sun sword territory, actually. Yeah, that, that Silver Sword 5 is going to set that fighter up for success. <laughs> we find Crescent Lake. The theme of today is towns, not the ones you want. Yeah. Chain 4 armor for 8 cents. Seems like a deal. Although we, we might get a, uh, a key item out of this, so it could be useful. Mm -hmm. Red learnable exit at 6. Fast at 6. Eesh. Yeah, so a lot of our endgame cells... Okay, Oxiel, that does open up uh, the Onrak dungeon. Mm -hmm. And we know where Onrak is, so that, that could actually be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Danny has found the waterfall. Didn't see which entrance that was. Given Spellzap's location, I want to assume that that's Melman Continent somewhere, perhaps? That seems plausible not recognizing the color palette right offhand. And we've got C split in Marsh Cave. Right split leads uh, to Kraken. Left split leads to Marsh Split. I mean, Yay. at least it's the first two floors of the dungeon. That it always <laughs> is terrible true. when you get like six floors down and then you find a split and then you go another three floors and then find the other split. That's mm -hmm. that's terrible. That is something I never want to have happen, but is always hilarious to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, shout out to Tracker Luffy. Uh, Danny was over by Crescent Lake, so the waterfall thingy mabomber is at Crescent Lake. Okay, that makes sense. Lots of fives, lots of low-level five swords today, and lots of magic we can't get from high-level towns. <laughs> okay, so C split left led to Marsh split, and Marsh split south led to Marsh bottom. So we have okay. a couple more chances at key items here. If we can mm -hmm. just get away from these scorpions, we might be able to open up that chest, but it's going to be a little bit risky. Fortunately, we have life. And all we have to do is open the chest. We don't actually right. have to, to escape with it. No, that's the beauty of co-op. Once one person opens an item, the team has it forever, regardless of anything that happens after that. Ooh, Sun minus two. That's another Eight. very good sword option. I think the Silver Five is better. <laughs> I mean, it'll be pretty close, but you can always give one of them to your Red Mage, and suddenly yeah. you've got two people capable of uh, oh. some single target damage. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that fighter is already swinging for uh, over 200 damage on that attack. That was kind of insane. Alright, who's our gatekeepers? Unrunnable, our giant Agama. But we got At Ice 3, so we got we ice three. Yeah. Well, that was a really good roll on that fire giant. There's a chance that we can get through this. 
Hey, good turn order is good. Pipe it. Uh, meanwhile, underneath the Oxiel was Treasure Dragons. And that box is a floater, which I don't believe we've sighted Canoe yet, so we only have half of the puzzle. No, but it's a very important piece. I kind of like finding floater before canoe, just because that means yes. there's fewer places where the floater could be. So you know, you're you're checking fewer yeah. places for that second piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it's it's not like you know you bum around for a bit, and then you get the canoe, and it's just like, all right, well, crap. Well, here's all these out of the way places that are terrible to get to, and the floater's probably in one of them, but it might not be. I'm gonna call it now. That herb is gonna gate the canoe. Uh I'll take that bet. All right, so Spells app does get out safely. He's going to take his levels and try to go for the top of Merch Split this time. Unfortunately, we can't just take our Ice 3 party and head on over to Clamped Kraken 1. That's going to be a bad time. So it looks like Hypes is going to explore the Marsh Cave entrance, so he's about to find the news that Kraken's here, as well as uh, possibly finding the floater. Has a little bit less of a supply than Spellzap did coming in here, so it's going to be a little bit rougher for him to get down to that chest. Uh, meanwhile, we've got Chadbert checking out the Earth Cave entrance. He's trudging through some of the marsh floors right now, and Danny is sailing around. Oh, we have a Bahamut sighting. Bahamut located. This is uh, this is giving everyone kind of everything they want. Yeah, so we're we're not gated by getting in the air for uh, class promotion. So that's pretty useful. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we don't have the tail yet, but uh, that could be big news for us. And it looks like the other side of the Marsh Split was just some treasure dragons, so Spellzap is going to take his Esper and happily walk his way out of here. I have a feeling he's also happy to see the Cat Claw. That's going to vendor for a lot, because I believe Crescent Lake Party Planners are still looking to afford their herb. Yeah, neither side has picked up the herb just yet, so uh, one of the runners getting up to that 65535 is going to be pretty important. Mm -hmm. Now again, the advantage of co-op, you share key items, so as soon as you buy that, you can actually mm -hmm. just reset and save that gold. Yep. So Hypes is going to take on the Hard Giant Agama pack, see how well he does. Immediately loses a nice three caster and the tank. And that's and gonna mage. be a reset. Well <laughs> And shout outs to Luffy with the shard count in chat. Our current shard count for Crescent Lake Party Planners is three and one, and the shard count for uh, team Big Brain Club is zero and one. So I've gotta... seen quite a few easily accessible early shards, but no like big dense areas, like no armory or anything like that. Yeah, although it is nice that Kraken is easily accessible. Oh, as we find uh, Carrie as well in the Earth. Uh... Wait a second. If Carrie's in the Earth Cave, I thought we saw Bahamut at the Earth Cave. Unsure. What I'm seeing is half a party. What I'm seeing is none of a party, unable to make it past toxic water things. No, oh, that was Dwarf Cave. Dwarf Cave. Okay, so Dwarf yeah. Cave's Carrie. So we do at least know that we've got six shards that are going to be available at a relatively quick pace, so that'll be great for wrapping up our runner's shard counts when they need it later on.
Although it looks like there is a bit of a trek down to carry. And Danny's going to try it again because she wants to get to that uh, chest in the left side of Carrie's floor because that has one of our incentive locations. Could be a key I'm, item that our runners need. I'm feeling that chest is the canoe. I'm feeling it. So we have a little bit of an interesting uh, party divergence. Uh, most of our runners on screen went with the Fighter Rainbow, a very safe option. Danny, on the other hand, took Fighter White Black Black. Uh, <laughs> I like that party a bit, although I might have traded the White Mage for a Red Mage, although with, uh, with the levels that we're getting in, in this kind of flag set, we're we're going to be equipped to, to cast level 7 and 8 spells, so I definitely understand wanting to go with a, a full mage rather than a hybrid mage. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts as far as uh, what party you would take in this flag set? So, for week one, I took Fighter Red Double Black, and I don't believe the flags changed enough for week two that it would scare me away from that red mage. So I would be taking Fighter Red Double Black here as well, because you cannot bank on getting early good magic so whatever you get out of level one you're gonna have to make go the distance if exits there in a slot that red can't learn sure reroll otherwise gonna need every bit of black magic we can lay claim to yep i definitely agree with that logic uh you you know that fighter red double black <laughs> is one of my favorite parties so uh, -huh. uh ne never gonna complain about that party <laughs> Uh, Zap is pretty close to the drop down, although he's uh, getting stopped quite literally by some wizards here. Yep. Traffic cop wizards making sure he doesn't cross the street without permission. Doesn't look like the wizards like to punch very much, but uh, when wizards do punch, they hurt. No, I'm kind of scared for what the second spell on this list will be. Uh oh. <laughs> no, fast is okay. Fast isn't until doing they actually to do us. punch. Sure, but fast isn't doing anything to us. Okay, now fast is doing things to us. Also, LOL sleep touch. <laughs> also, LOL ice two third spell on the list. Okay. Okay, that's bad news. Meanwhile, shoutouts to chat saying that uh, the Big Brain Club has acquired a canoe. not catch where that was my guess is waterfall no it's wherever that tile is yeah waterfall okay all right so waterfall yielded the canoe so each team has half the puzzle they'll need the other half to put the pieces mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. assuming that hypes continues his trek uh exploring through the rest of this marsh cave he is going mm -hmm. to find that floater so Big Brain Club might have the uh, early advantage for travel. Possibly, but Danny, having bounced out of uh, attempting to get to the carry floor, is returning back to the waterfall floor that she tried previously. Gonna try her luck over here again. As Spellzap continues working towards uh, the ice incentive. I spotted an ice hammer too. Not, not what we wanted out of a caster item. Mm, that being an ice one casting hammer two? Yes. Mm, yeah, that's decidedly less exciting <laughs> than an ice two hammer. Yeah. I try to uh, I try to differentiate pronouncing them that it's like it's an ice hammer two. Like that's that is that's the bad version. That that's the we have an ice two hammer at home version. Yeah. Not so great. Meanwhile, Chadbert on my favorite floor in the game, Sky 3. Big Brain Club having decided that Canoe has got to lead to the floater, so we're going to check floater locations where possible, but Danny picks up the Canoe. Yep, so Crescent Lake Party Planners are first with the two pieces of puzzle together. They're going to be able to get into the air. Uh, looks like Hypes dipped out on Marsh Cave, so they are going to be a little bit later to that uh, Sky Party. Mm -hmm. And Spellzap has given up on the Ice Loop, or maybe not. Well, he got the rod out of the incentive chest, yeah, so he yeah, might we just be going rod. back for treasure chests. 
sure. What was in the treasure chest that we really, really want? The Excalibur oh, Excal 4. That's, that's that pretty makes solid. Sense. We figured it out. And race with Quad X and Blizzard. Mm, how badly do we want that Excalibur 4 right now? Answer kind of a bit. Given that our runners have the ability to get into the air, because they have both pieces of the puzzle, and right. that they don't have the tail, I would be incentivized to push it off a little bit because that pack is deadly. Yep. And, and spells out that pack had to make that play. <laughs> We're done with this. He's got to wait for his rod and his canoe to show up, staring longingly at the river system, having a wonderful time. Got the items saved, and now we're off. There we go. Uh, question chat. Where was Floater? Floater was in the Marsh Bottom, which was... Where was that? Marsh Cave, Sea Split Left, Marsh Split Bottom. <laughs> yeah, that. All right, so we've got a vampire at the Volcano. Or no, I'm sorry, this is the ice cave. Vampire in the ice cave today. Right, I believe Danny found Rodlock, although I'm not sure where. Yeah, she's she's in the ice cave. Oh, right it, now, in ice cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, Chadbert finds Sharknado with an ice five sword. That's Hey, that's a weapon. Pretty good. That's, I'll take that's it. That's pretty really good actually. <laughs> I'll take two. And Danny having about the same luck with Wizards that Spellzap did. Wizards are the gatekeeper of the seed so far. Meanwhile, Spellzap taking on Ordeals as Hypes does a little bit of last minute shopping. And Chadbert still canoeing around. Finds Dwarf Cave. It's probably updating notes right now. Thinking, all right. What have we done? What have we missed? We've got a canoe. We probably haven't been to Ordeal's location. What are we missing? We're missing something. Well, unfortunately for the Big Brain Club, they have a few more options available since they do have that canoe. They can go up to Ordeal's Castle, which we know is not the place that they really want to be right now, based on the right. fact that it doesn't have the floater. Right. Uh, we don't have northern docks on, right? So they can't actually Correct. make it up to uh, Onrak area or uh, Mirage. So at Correct. Least, at least that narrows the field a little bit for them. And girls with glare giving Danny yet more trouble in the Rodlock floor. As Spells Out finds an Aegis 5 shield. Want. That, that's a really good shield. And another Excalibur 4. So hey, <laughs> now, now we don't have to even consider going back to the other one. Sure. Bottle, and we know where Gaia is. Yep. Danny gonna scout out the uh, western side of the Melmon continent. Mm -hmm. We got a dungeon at Sardis Cave. Hey, Temple of Fiends located. We found it. Looks like Spells App found an Isviz 2 shirt. I didn't see exactly which uh, area he's in right now, but definitely a good item. <laughs> oh, that's. Yeah, he's, he's in on, on a ordeal still. My bad. Got it. As Danny finds the mighty slap minus five. Yeah, the poor defense sword. When you turn on magic shuffle, it stops being a good sword. <laughs> all the weapons so far have kind of been a case of just like all on or all off. Like, no, no real middle of the road. Yeah, it's uh, they're either really good or really bad. <laughs> There's, that's all there is to it. As 
Hypes returns to Marsh Cave location. Yeah, we know that's where he really wants to be right now. He doesn't quite yep. know it yet, but he's going to figure it out soon enough. Yep, he's probably kicking himself over the, um, over wiping out of the uh, Argiant Agama encounter. Hey, we finally have access to more spells. We find Provoka at Onrak. So Provoka and Onrak just traded places today. <laughs> Bane, Temper, and Zap at level two. Seems good. Yeah, this is your spell for your store for all your instant kills and the one that you never pick up. With Expert and Tier 4 at level 2, that's... That's probably drop. a really strong knight once we get promoted. He's going to have life and Cure 4. Yep. That's going to be real good. All right, what do we got out of pirates today? Here come the mighty pirates. There go the mighty pirates. As Hypes gets a minimum sprite encounter for the Art Giant Agma pack. Spells oh. gets a slab. We know where Lafayne is. We don't yet know where Melmond is. Mm -hmm. But and Big Brain Club time gets... blocked, we do have access to it. Big Brain Club gets the news about the floater. It's time to go get our flying hot dog. We found ice, another copy of Ice 2 on uh, the Wiz Ogre, uh, Gur Ogre, and Hyena pack. I didn't see which one had it, though. Mm -hmm. The real bad one... I'm oh, sorry, the real good one to have in there would have been the Hyena, because that's the one you see the least. Wiz Ogres tend to pop up a lot. Grogers tend to pop up a lot. Yeah, Grogers are in more places than you realize. Uh... <laughs> They, they, they just, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. Is it weird that you were just wondering how I was doing yesterday, LCB? Well, I'm doing okay. I've been taking a little bit of hiatus and enjoying my vacation. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah, and, uh, and then some jerk pulled up, honk horn, threw him in the truck, and now he's doing comms. It's great. Yeah, you know. Always happy to help a friend out. <laughs> Uh, level 3 magic had lock 2 and wall and I guess cure 3 if you're into that. Kind of into it? Less into it with cure 4 at 2 though. Yeah. Uh, invis 1 at 4? Because I don't recall seeing invis 2 anywhere other than on a shirt. Yeah. Invis 1's a pretty good spell. Yeah. And in black magic we have fire 3. That's eh, not that's not bad. Okay, so we've got Ice 3 and Fire 3 in our first four levels of magic. Not the best layout, but we do have some other uh, useful spells. Yeah, it'll do. So, let's talk Nuke, because we haven't seen it. That basically means it has to be either 8 or 5, because I don't think we've seen the level 8 shops, and we haven't found Melmond. Correct. Yeah, there's basically a 50% chance that it's going to be castable and a 50% chance that we're almost never going to cast it. Mm -hmm. As Spells Up awkwardly finds Canaria, even though he hasn't rescued the princess yet, only gets an adamant. Chad Burton located the cube. I don't think we've seen the cube walk yet. Nah, my money is on uh, one of the Cardi Isles for that. Yeah. Like, I feel like I always find the cube block in the Cardi Isles, unless I find it in, like, the first continent. Right. Alright, so Hypes is going through ordeals. He is going to get the bottle at the end of this. Uh, I don't believe that Spellzap and Danny turned in that bottle, so we don't know yet what it turns into. Correct. Um, this is going to be the part of the race where 
team Big Brain Club does a little bit of catch up work to catch up to Crescent Lake party planners who have had their airship for only a couple minutes more. But in that couple minutes, they've fanned out and have been very thoroughly exploring the world. Yeah, it's always an interesting question whether you explore wide or deep. And I think right. after you get the airship, uh, especially given that we found so many towns early that had high level magic, wide was definitely a good way to go. Um, yeah. Crescent Lake Party Planners definitely wanted to fill out their spell book and try and pick up a, a, a bit more magic for themselves. Um, mm -hmm. Found a couple good hits, but not anything that's going to be like letting us just plow through the rest of the game just yet. Right. Now, the big things we have to look for right now, we haven't found the loot, we haven't found the key, and we kind of still need buckets of shards. Yeah, Chadbird's got seven. Spells up and Danny a little bit behind with six. Uh, definitely our runners have some good clues where, where they can get some shards. But there is our cube block, and it is in the Cardia Isles. Mm -hmm. Spells up finds the cube block, but Team Crescent Lake Party Planners hasn't found the cube yet. They're going to have to come back for this. So, as mentioned, it's been a little bit uh, since I, I've played, so I'm a little <laughs> out of the loop. Uh, what are we looking for for, like, Topher levels? High 20s, low 30s? So, in general, I feel like low 30s is the average of what people end up landing on. Although, if we find a good caster item, um, it's not uncommon to see a solo knight grind to 50. And then just wherever the mages land is wherever the mages land. Okay. Seems a reasonable enough approach. It kind of depends on where we land for an endgame weapon. The Excalibur 4 is real, real good. Um, a high level knight swinging that is likely to overcome a lot of problems that we're likely to find in Topher. Okay, so we found Northwest Castle, but we don't have the crown and we don't have the key, so that's not going to really help us just yet. <laughs> Chat saying that uh, you would demand someone hold your bottle and do it at level 22. Confirm, deny? I, I mean, I was thinking 24, but you know. <laughs> the real, the real, uh, the real monkey wrench in the works is without a reliable level and without a reliable Mazza existing because we're on randomized treasure, it's oh. real hard to like bank on melee damage being there. Speaking of Mazza, we just found a Mazmian 1 in e. uh, Earth 2. I'll take it. And we got a vanilla loot out of Princess. So that's one of the two big key items we need. Yeah, so... I was wrong about the herb turning into the canoe. So we've still got the herb out there. We've got the bottle to turn in still. So we're going to have to figure out what those give us. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the ruby to be able to access the Titan's Trove. Don't have the crown, don't have the tail. So definitely a couple of puzzle pieces missing. Right. But the good news is that with incentive locations set up the way they are, we know we know where they're going to be in like the what does the floor look like sense. We just don't know where those floors are. And unfortunately, mermaids is not incentivized due to the high amount of boxes that never have any stinking shards in them. Does oh, we got Vorpal a... 3, though. Vorpal 3, that's interesting. It's not the greatest of raw stats, but that crit rate can definitely come in uh, very handy if we get a tough uh, boss that we have to mm -hmm. slice through. I'm looking at our options of Excalibur 4, Vorpal 3, and Mazza 1. 
and I'm really feeling like the answer is Excalibur 4 up until Tia 2 and then Vorpal 3 the rest of the way. Because we've got level 2 I Temper. I think I would go with Battle 1 Classic. over either of those, personally. Um, Excal 4, you, you could make a case through through at least Kraken 2. I, I feel yeah. that Tia 2 generally tends to be a little bit too tanky to rely yeah. on that, though. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely, that uh, that Excal 4 will easily handle anything outside of Topher. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, the other, the other uh, decisive factor there is that we have... Uh, we have to find the tail in order to make use of either the Excal or the Vorpal. Which, sure. presumably, we will find the tail eventually, but uh, yeah. until that point, uh, sure. that is equivocal. Sure. But I already feel like we have super massive incentives to get that uh, to get that tail. We've got the Aegis 5 shield, we've got the Excalibur 4, we've got a knight capable of casting life and cure 4. Like... That's that. That's the time to go hunting for the tail. Oh, absolutely. I I definitely definitely agree that uh, our runners will likely prioritize finding that tail, even if they have the means to go into Topher beforehand. Mm I suppose that does also uh, come into play of where that tail actually is. If, for instance, we find Matoya at the bottom of a you know twelve floor dungeon, and uh, we don't have the crystal yet, that's not something you exactly want to come back to. Sure, but we'll only have to do it once because Bahamut was early game and easy to get to. Right, this is true. All right, Big Brain Club finally going to give us our first look at what that bottle turns into after stocking up a little bit on some camping gear. Meanwhile, Spells App's going to go check out what's in Ordeals. Mm, never mind, we're not going to turn in bottle. Did we do, did we do a bottle turn in and I missed it? Mm, double mm. check. I don't see it on our tracking notes. Huh. Because I know Hypes... Either Hypes or Chad has been to Ordeals. Hmm. But Spells App finds another incentive room, and we get the key. So now it's just a hunt for shards. Ball and the tail. Hmm, free XP. I will take this. Mm -hmm. Oh, not free XP. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> Reverse it. Free. We're we're getting out of here. <laughs> Turns out the party is free XP for the eye. All right. Well, that's we're gonna need to come up with a non-eye based plan. Turns out the eyes have it today, and it being yep. Duke. Uh, Tracker confirming that the bottle is in. Uh, Team Big Brain Club's inventory. Yeah, I definitely saw the bottle in Hype's inventory when he was literally just inside uh, Gaia. So I thought that he was going to go turn it in. That's where he was doing uh, camping gear shopping. But uh, I guess they're holding us in a little bit more suspense first. Yep. Bellzab's going to go take crack at Lich, uh, just has a fighter to do it, but probably isn't too big of an issue. And fighter a fighter with most, like, half the swords in his inventory are probably good enough for this. We're going to try it with what looks like a silver sword. Uh, Incoming blaze, but that's probably the scariest thing we'll see out of this, because there's ink. We're going to try another swing. Three hits, 122. We're a couple hundred damage in so far. Yep, more ink happens. Big melee. Not the kind of melee I would expect out of Lich 1. This is going to be. This is actually going to be dodgy. Ooh, but spells up gets there. Gets the damage in. 
even a spicy Lich One, no match for a single fighter with a Silver Sword Five. I mean, to be fair, those mages probably wouldn't have stood up through that blaze anyway, so... <laughs> is hypes taking a gr i believe team big brain club has decided that our giant agama is the tile they're going to stake their grind on thanks to the level one ice three not a bad option certainly there's better that could potentially exist but we don't know if they exist or not and we know this one is right here and it's pretty easy to get to i wonder if we're doing an end game level grind or if we're just topping off our levels before we try some fiend kills yeah, I'm I'm extra curious now why they haven't turned in that bottle then. Because if they were both intending on going and doing a grind, why not turn in that bottle and try and get another key item to get yourself that extra 10% EXP? Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, uh, Amazing Magical Dwarves uh, holding a Brackstick. They're my new favorites. The Brackstick's real good. I will absolutely take a Brackstick. Mm-hmm. Danny, it's faster to go right around that room. <laughs> oh, n no. You can't you, you can't snub the hooray dwarf. I don't I don't care that NPC guillotine is on. You have to crack the hooray dwarf open to steal his power. <sighs> Disappointment all around. Uh, looks like Big Brain Club. Looks like Hypes is done with a grind for now, or possibly out of Ice Threes. I'm gonna bank on the ladder. They see the the one issue I have with that grind is number one is three floors deep in a dungeon. Number sure. two, it took like three Ice Threes to take out those Agamas, so you're gonna run sure. out of charges real fast. Sure. Which leads me to believe that this is a topping off levels grind and not a plant our flag and get to 30 grind. Yeah, I, I, I definitely don't think this is a tile you would take to 30 this deep into a dungeon. If it was top four, maybe. Ray's showing Blizzard, and uh, that is another wipe for Danny. Rays are not a pleasant enemy under normal circumstances, when they've got Blizzard and Quad X especially. No, I think this is the time where we just kind of drop everything and go on a hunt for Melman, because that's where our Pro Rings are going to be for sale. Yeah, we've, we've seen Toxic, we've seen Quad X, we need a solution to those problems. Yep. Uh, speaking of purchasing things, though, no runner has picked up that herb yet. No, it's like 64 grand. This is, this is expensive. It's hard. And Spells App finds the incentive ribbon out of Carry Floor. It's a ribbon minus two, but it doesn't matter what the stats are. That's not the purpose of it. Spells app is drawing pretty close to the gold range where you could actually pick up that herb. I haven't checked the money situation of our other runners just yet, though. <laughs> Chat pointing out that Toxic Gators are guarding the item you want for facing Toxic Gators. Yep, that's, that's FFR in a nutshell. <laughs> yep. So Danny checking out Northwest Castle. What do we got for tiles in here? We got Ogre. It's all Ogre. So Spelltop's going to take a crack at carry one. I'm curious what his battle plan is, because I think it's basically just swing and temper. Oh, we're going to go with extra strats. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I want what I want to see is I want to see X for Brackstick. Yeah, I mean, that would definitely work. But I feel like we're leaning into Expert into uh, Bane. Or maybe not, because down I, goes our Expert caster. I, I think we're about to get punched real hard. We're going to have to come up with a new plan. 
That plan is called evasion. Nope, we're still... Because we're going to have to kill Carrie at some point. Oh, the X for lands. How about some Bane? Nah. Big incoming melee swing for 148. The X for went off. We're going to cure for... Are we? No, hang on. Hold it. We're going to... We're going to mute. We're going to take advantage of that status vulnerability, and we're going to mute. And we're going to bane. In another big hit to the fighter. He's not going to survive another one of those. Invis 2 shirt goes off. Mute. Ineffective. Bane? Ineffective. I'm not sure mute is the play here when uh, the thing we're concerned about is the 500 damage punches. Right. Bane continuing to be ineffective. We get turn order on the cure 4. Swing. 2 hits 23. The white mage offends us. It shall be removed. We're going to try some more Invis 2 shirts. We're going to have to go to a melee based plan, I think. Invis 2 will eventually get us to melee uh, to evasion cap. First temper goes off. I'm going to try some lock 2 just to make it super easy to hit. Still four hits for 219, even with the Invis 2 casts that we've had so far. We need to become unhittable. Also, we're out of pain. Yeah, I'm not liking uh, how this fight is going. Nah. Oh. Fortunately, one hit for second made. three. Was that five or was that six evasion? We're gonna find out. Ice three for 121. Swing. Three hits, 139. Incoming melee. Missed. Swinging and ice three. Ice three goes off for 76. Incoming melee misses. Outgoing. Three hits, 126. Just keep chipping away. Three hits, 86. Ice three for 76. Incoming melee misses. We're. I'm going to say we're at evasion cap. Outgoing ice three. A 119. Swing. Three hits, 124. I'm suspecting the reason that mute didn't work is because we've got no spells or skills in sight. Ice three for 100 and change. Three hits for 235. Carry one is still there. A melee hit landed. I'm going to try fire three because it's all we got. Fire three lands for 70. Melee swing. Three hits, 85. Incoming. Misses. We've got a lot of outgoing damage here over time. Two hits for 66. Fire three for 92. Takes carry one. So interestingly, some of those were actually hitting without being criticals, which means not quite evasion cap, but definitely very close to it. Right. Uh, question in chat. Does mute fail against things with no spells? I don't actually know. Uh, I feel I like the answer might be yes. No, I believe it will still mute them. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe it will still mute. <laughs> and meanwhile, as we are focused on the carry fight, the Big Brain Club has found the Big Brain Herb. We're going to see if they turn it into the Big Brain Elf King momentarily. All right, Elf King, what you got for us? da 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 Everyone loves fetch quests. Well, at least we know where dwarves are. It's not like uh, the crystal, where we just don't have a clue yet where Matoya is. Right. And hot on the heels of the Big Brain Club herb purchase, Crescent Link Party Planners gets an herb of their own. I spy Dragon 4 armor acquired for on Danny's side as Chad Burke taking on the pirates and hypes having a bad time with some anky woes. Spell Zap checks out the treasure dragons at the bottom of Onrak and doesn't find anything, resets right back out, saves his money. And he's going to go try and finish off this dungeon that Danny started earlier. Danny taking a little bit of time to update notes, plan progression from here on out. So we still haven't seen Melmond yet, which leads me to think that Melmond is probably locked behind the chime. Mm, yes, that would be my guess as well. 
And we also haven't seen Matoya, so I'm going to guess that she's blocked behind the cube. So I'll be very curious to see... Uh, A, where we find the, the chime or the crystal, and B, uh, what those actually turn into for us being from the slab or from the yeah. crystal. So Danny has returned to the scene of the uh, wizard traffic cop crime. He tried stopping her, but she was able to cross the street anyway. And she's approaching the room of the mythical evil vampire, Scourge of Melmond, Emissary of Lich, Terror of the Farmlands, truly a mighty adversary that no mere mortal can ever hope to stop. Such is the mighty power of the vampire. Definitely deserving. And he's right. gone. Oh, the cube was behind the rod. Or behind the vampire, at least, anyway. Mm -hmm. so I wonder what's down here. So I don't recall seeing it, but Team Big Brain Club must have gotten to it. Oh, a Mirage Tower floor. Uh, Team Big Brain Club actually doesn't have the rod yet, so they would not have uh, right. been able to explore this. That's correct. Right. So my experience so far with Greater Than Less Than Room is it tends to have like three or four shards in it. Why? I don't know, but it generally just does. Let's see how many it has today. I'm thinking three. I mean, it does have ten chests. That's ten out of the, you know, 250 or so that are in the game. There's it's pretty good odds that you're going to find something good in the Less, the less Than Greater Than Room. Uh, we have an Iron Goal sighting. Heck yeah. I believe that's the member four tile. We got your championship. You know, they played with great. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so we got an earth cave floor, earth one block behind that rod. Come on, Earthcave, what you got for us? Mirage. <laughs> One! <laughs> sure. Th this is Cave Earth and Sky. Yep. The spells that find Sarda. And it's just Marsh Top. Hey, we got a ruby. So that ruby probably has to lead to something we need now that we've seen behind Broadlock and it just leads to Marsh Top. I yeah, feel like that ruby is going to be Chime. Well, it's got to be Chime or Crystal, right? Well, I mean, I guess it could be Crown. It could be Crown, that's true. But we have the slab. So we, we got to have access because I have a feeling the slab is going to be either. I have a feeling the slab is going to be our crystal. Our crystal is going to be garbage. Or our crystal could still be the tail. We have not located the tail. That's true. All right. What do we got out of the bottle? 50 bucks. Yeah, so I feel like when all's said and done... Oh, speaking There's of tail... There's the tail. Tail came the from TNT. TNT. Yes. Which means... Slab uh, is probably... like At the end of this fetch quest, it has to be Opal Bracelet, right? Uh, like, or, or Garbage. Well, Opal, Opal Bracelet or Garbage. Yeah. So like the the last endpoint incentive item that we have out there is the oval bracelet. Sure. 
well, and, and Chime, but we know that Chime at this point is going to just open up Melmond. Right. Uh, question in chat. Have they seen Bahamut yet? Yes, Bahamut was found pretty early. I want to say in the Elfland area. Uh, I want to say it was Earth Cave entrance. We'll find out in a bit when Hypes goes there. All right, so Spells App and Danny have taken a little bit of a shard lead now, 13 and 12 respectively, compared to Chadbert's 8 and Hypes' 6. Although uh, 6 of Spells App's shards have come directly from killing... Uh, sorry, 4 of them have come from killing fiends, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, we have the key now, so we actually also have uh, Marsh Locked available to us. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, we have Marsh Locked. Okay, that that kind of makes things make a little more sense, because I was wondering if we were running out of unlocked areas to access. Okay. Yeah, so we've got Marsh Locked, we've got whatever's behind the cube... Oh, this was Prothos Castle, right. Right, right, right. Ah, there, well, there's our Opal bracelet. <laughs> so, Marsh Bottom's got to lead to Chime somehow. Yeah, uh, question, so... we have the loot? Uh, yes, loot. Well, we know where the loot is. The loot came out of Princess Sarah. Um, Team Crescent Lake Party Planners has found that. Um, Team Big Brain Club knows where Canaria Castle is, but the person who went there was not the person that killed Garland. So the person that killed Garland is going to have to go back. And Hypes is pulling up to the Earth Cave entrance. I think you might have been right about Bahamut being here. We're kind of getting into that phase of the game where we realistically have all the knowledge we need to beat the seed. We just kind of have to go through the motions at this point, collecting the shards, getting the levels, etc. Right. Um, what are kind of your your thoughts for endgame strategy here, given this seed so far? I mean, we've, we've definitely so, got to get levels on the night. We definitely want to get them promoted. Weapons were in great shape. Magic. Hey realistically i feel like we still have to dig out wherever this chime is so that we can get our stupid uh what i believe to be level five nuke at this point um because i i don't want to take on a clamp topher without my black magic casters being at their full potential um other than that i think a good grind tile would be nice we caught sight of an iron gall tile Failing anything else, I would try that once I have Nuke available. Um, but that's really only useful for a full party grind. That's not really good for a solo grind. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm still I'm not considering myself entering the end game just yet. I'm still considering myself in mid game because there's there's too many missing pieces that I have yet to sort out. Yeah, I guess if I were in these runner's shoes, I'm kind of at the point where the only thing we really need are, are well, I guess we're still looking for shards, though, so we still do have to open boxes. Yeah. So I was going to say I'd be at the point where I'd be skipping chests, but can't really do that in chart hunt, so. Uh, question chat. Night learnable life? Yes. And cure four. Yeah, this was supposed to be a Shadow Walker special. I am disappointed. Yeah, y'all yelled at me for rolling an easy seat. Look at this nonsense. Oh, so Danny is over in Lefe Ooh! <laughs> an extra, an extra gauntlet. minus four gauntlet. Yes. Good. I mean, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We have an extra gauntlet and a Brax stick. Yep. That's 
you know, there, there's there's some cheeky potential there. Sometimes the seed just tells you, hey, hey, dum-dum, listen up, do this. And sometimes you just have to listen. All right, so Hypes is going to give this Iron Goal a chance. We're trying melee strats on it because we don't really have great other options. Oh, uh, if we get a Vorpal, this might work. But we're swinging the Panza. It's not bad. It's doing the job. I'm not convinced I would be using these Fire 3s. If I intended to go Magic, I would have tried to land Exper. Golems tend to have uh, very weak Magic defense, so... Right. Let me go. Got through it relatively easily. So Team Crescent Lake Party Planners just picked up their TNT. Now they just need to trundle back to the Dwarf Cave, and they'll have their tail, and then they can get their promotion. Meanwhile, Big Brain Club still on the hunt for the key. The key, of course, being in Starshape Room, and the Starshape Room location somewhere in the northern continent, I believe. I do not remember where. Oh, we have a Matoya sighting, but no crystal to turn in. So Matoya was past the rod uh, cube block then. Got it. So I feel very confident in saying at this point that the uh, marsh locked chest has to to lead to the chime. Yes. Yes. You know there can be any number of steps in between there, but it it basically has to be the the chime. I think mm -hmm. we've seen all other except maybe the bottle. I still don't know if anybody's turned in that stupid bottle. Yes, uh, Crescent Lake Party Planners turned in the bottle. They got 5,000 gold. Ah, okay. Yep. And Danny has wiped. I miss what Danny wiped too. It was uh, Catman Sabertooth, I think. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I know they definitely had a, a skill list and some nasty stuff on it, so... Yeah. Alright, Danny has picked up her Masmune 1 again. Didn't equip it, though. Danny, you, you equipped a great axe over Masmune? Question mark, question mark. For the memes. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, until we actually, you know, swing a weapon at something that's an actual, like, threat. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't have confidence in this plan. I, no, I, have no, 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 no. I have confidence in you equip your best weapon, period. No, 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 it's fine. The memes will see you through. I'm going to call disbelieve. There's a certain cope that wishes to have words with you. So coming up on the one hour mark, looking at shard count, spells up with a commanding lead at 21, uh, but Danny only having 13, whereas Hypes and Chadbert are pretty even at 10 and 11 respectively. I think Spellzap just needs to hit some Fiend dungeons, and then he's good to go. Everyone else is still looking for stuff. Notably, where that stupid stinking chime is, so we can go to stupid stinking Melman in her stupid stinking new. Yeah, I mean, realistically, Spellzap just needs three more shards. He knows where Kraken is, and Kraken's really easy to get to, so mm -hmm. uh, three more shards, and he's kind of in shard go mode at that point. Danny picked up her quick two shards in the Canaria locked chests as well. So she's also pretty close to that kill fiends and go mode.
Spells app with the TNT and key in hand is going to give us a look at these dwarf lock chests and get the rat tail for his team. Braxtick, the words, pump the brakes. Yeah, the worst words in the world. Can't hold Braxtick. No, we're going to... There's got to be something in this inventory we can throw out. I mean, with weapons, or with armor, it's a little bit harder, because it's like, I need to equip all of this right now. I can't worry about what I'm equipping later, but with weapons, it's just like, how many wear swords do I actually need? Answer zero. <laughs> So Hypes is killing more Iron Goals. I think he's settled on a two-man grind. That's what it's looking like. If we can kill these Iron Goals at a reasonable pace, I don't hate this. It's going to almost, I, I think, almost entirely rely on when the Mazda 1 crits, which at a plus one, it's going to be ever so slightly above normal. That's only a 1% increase in crit rate. Yeah, he's quickly losing HP, though. I think that these Iron Goals punch just a little bit too hard to take out a 2-pack uh, quickly. And they have, yeah, they have a little bit too much health for this. If this was the grind I was committed to, I would be bringing the Vorpal 3. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if Hypes has picked up that Vorpal 3. I know that Spellzap saw it. I'm not sure which other runners have picked it up. Sure. But yeah, definitely Vorpal is the sword that you want to bring into this fight if you're committed to taking this as a grind. Yeah. Yeah, it, at this pace, this fight is just dragging out way too long. It would be more efficient even to go back to the... Uh, four packs uh, in Marsh with the yeah. uh, Our Giants and Agmas. I haven't seen any other decent tiles, though. And it would be the worst thing in the world to find uh, the three eye tile in this seat. Yeah, three turn one nukes is uh, not the not the grind nah. tile that we we wanted. Pass. <laughs> Especially if they ambush, man, you don't even get a turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Falconic in, in chat also pointing out that. Uh, Cres uh, Big Brain Club just really doesn't have the key items to make a grind that viable right now. Um, mm -hmm. So so even though, e even if that fight were to be faster, uh, it's not really worth it considering how much time it's taken and how little right. the reward is. So Team Crescent Lake Party Planners has access to the tail, is now trying to figure out where was that gosh dang Bahamut as Danny takes on very, very mean carry one. Spellzap had a heck of a time with this fight earlier. I have to imagine Danny's levels are higher. Danny swinging with that fighter for two damage. The greatest of axes it is. <laughs> yeah, two hits, 58. That's about the melee damage we saw earlier. Oh, that, in that incoming damage is... Uh, mm, oh, boy. Yeah, that was kind of the problem here, is that carry hurt a lot, and yeah, you know, melee strats are only good as long as your melee is standing, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, time for zap strats. <laughs> I mean, well, there's like that, that three and three and two fifty six. That's a little more accurate than that. It's like sub ten percent, but it's still there. Oh yeah, I guess I guess carry one's uh. MDEF is a little bit lower. No, no, I I am pretty confident it's still only a 3 and 256 on carry 1. I remember <laughs> finding the math at some point. It's, yeah, it's sub 10%, but it's better than, it's better than nothing. 
Mm. Okay. Uh, ogres with a spell a list starts with fire. All right. Spellzap's got his promotion in hand. He is going <laughs> to not go pick up spells for his knight. I, I thought he was going to just go get life and cure four, but I, I guess he has other plans. Uh, we only need them when we need them. We don't have any spell levels at the moment. Those are things we can pick up prior to Telfer. Man, Zap also found a Katana 4 along the way. It's uh, a <laughs> real shame that that knight can't equip that. It's like the first time in any of these seeds where I've seen anything other than like Katana minus 5. So Hypes has found Carry Floor. Can try his luck on Toxic Gators and then maybe try his luck on the Toxic Carry 1. Curious what spells that plan is. He's got 25 shards, so he's within striking distance of getting his 28. Oh, he's going for Tiamat over Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Get those Warmech levels. Oh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right. Here comes our, our, ro our lovable robot boy. <laughs> Let's check this fight out. We open with Invis. At least I think that was Invis. It was Black Invis, Mage, but it was on the white, white Wizard. Oh, maybe maybe the plan here is to Invis the Invis 2 shirt wielder. Uh, the plan here is Expert Brack. As the first Expert is attempted, Invis 2 goes off. Temper on the night. Next plan. We're going to try more Temper Strats. Some more Invis 2, and a little bit of X for Gauntlet. Incoming Ink does ink things. Invis 2 goes off. The party is at two evasion stacks of six. X for Gauntlet. Ineffective. Temper? Temper. Temper? Temper. With some Invis 2, and maybe some A Rub. Interesting. Invis 2 goes off. A Rub goes off. We are defending magic. Temper. Tempers. Next round, Temper, Temper. Invis 2, and some Expert. Expert, ineffective, Temper, Temper. Incoming Punch, down goes the Black Mage. We, we no longer have access to Temper, but what we do have is four stacks of six of that Invis 2 shirt. Incoming Nuclear, rolls kind of pretty low. Tier 4 goes off, Test Swing, missed. That's bad news. So, we're going to have to come up with a non-melee-based plan. And what is that plan called? It's called X for Swirl almost kills the White Mage. X for Gauntlet. I believe that said ineffective. Invis 2 that was goes defenseless. off. I was defenseless? Who's holding the Brackstick? It ain't the Warrior. Swing crit for 429. That's pretty good. Who's holding Brackstick? Brackstick. Brack? Nah. Incoming nuclear. Did we rip through that skill list, or was that a second nuclear? I believe we just went right through it. We'll find out in a minute. I think it was a second nuclear. Swing crit for 405. Ink goes off. Brack, nah. Swing, miss. Brack, swing. Swing, miss. Punch, miss. Brack, miss. Everyone's just kind of whirling around each other in a flurry of not actually doing anything. Misses and ineffectives all round. Brack? No Brack. We're gonna keep trying Brack though. Swing? Miss. Brack? No Brack. Punch? Miss. Are we locked into some sort of cruel loop? No we're not because there's a nuclear that almost melts the mage and there's outgoing damage with 319. Brack true to form still misses. Punch? Miss. Swing? Miss. Cure 4? Hit. Cure 4? On the night. Punch? Miss. Cure 4? Hit. Swing? Miss. Eventually, damage or Brack is going to get there. It's not Brack this round, but it is the melee crit for 409. Down goes our friendly, lovable robot chicken. Dang. Well, it's a good thing that that Warmech had low HP, because uh, that was a whole lot of whiffed turns. <laughs> All right, and now our prize at the end of the fight, a free Tia kill. Brack. 
Not on turn one. Five hits for 62. Sleep, slap, bane. Ineffective. Wall for safety. How about... We're going to convert over to a melee fight. We're going to temper up the knight. Incoming punch. Down goes red mage. Outgoing swing. Four hits, 66. Going to need a lot of tempers, I think, to make this work. Which is awkward because that mage is out of level two magic. So let's try some brack. Brack. Ineffective. Melee. One hit, one damage. Actual melee. Five hits, 285. We're just leaning on melee strats at this point, which is a little awkward because we're starting to run out of party members. Four hits, 53 means we're not going fast enough. One more swing. Four hits, 58. Brack. Borkin' to pizzas. Down goes Tia one. So that is the end of Spells Up's Orbs and has pretty good levels coming out of it on his knight and his white wizard, at least. Yeah, but the other two mages are down in the low 20s as Hypes is going to get the bad news about this here Warmech. Warmech immediately explodes the white mage. Warmech has figured out that the key to victory is making sure that no heals anywhere can happen. Magic, lock, tempers, tempers. Swing. Two hits, 335. That's a little bit better than we were receiving earlier. Lock two goes off. Ink does ink things. We're going to try swing, temper, lock two. Swing. One hit, 121. Temper goes off. There's the first nuclear. Two over 200 damage to both of the mages. Lock two goes off. What are we going to do now? Oops, we left the healer face down. Well, we didn't leave it face down. It became face down. Uh, we're going to consider our options real quick. What do we do about this? Either we continue melee, or we heft out that there Brackstick and hope for the best. I think at this point, Nova's kind of pot committed. He should really just be going for the throat and just try and melee it down. <laughs> we have the advantage of knowing that it's a lower HP Warmech, but I, I think regardless of the situation, he's got some locks landed. He knows that he's doing damage. I, I think you have to go for it. Mm -hmm. The other advantage that both teams have now is we know that this Warmech actually had quite a nasty skill list. It had double nuclear and swirl. Which yes. means that uh, that's a lot of nastiness out of the pool for endgame bosses. It's also a lot of nastiness out of Nova's pool as uh, the melee guy got exploded. We're going to reset. We're going to try that again. Yeah, sometimes Warmech will do that. Just Warmech things. As Chadbird is trying the Iron Gall grind, also trying a melee focused grind. Fasting up a knight, a knight that is swinging. I believe that was the Excal, which was doing a lot of damage. And Spell Zap taking the Iron Gall grinds as well. I wonder if both of our teams have abandoned the hunt for the chime. Because at this point, it's got to be Marsh Bottom, right? Yeah, I mean, that's literally the only incentive location we haven't seen. Yeah. So it, it has to come from Marsh Bottom. Whether or not there's steps in between is kind of irrelevant. Right. Actually, I think it has to be Marsh Bottom gives Crystal, Crystal turns in for Chime, and then Slab turns in for Doesn't Matter. <laughs> or I suppose it could be the other way around. Slab could turn in for Crystal. Yeah. Either way, I think it's worth the effort. Yeah, since nobody's checked the level 8 Black Magic, we kind of want an answer to that 50-50 question of can we cast Nuke the Seed, or is Nuke irrelevant to see. Spellsap has given up on the Iron Gall grind. He's headed elsewhere. Oh, this is where Marsh Bottom is. Maybe he's put it together and remembered. Notably, there are also two or three trap tiles down here that he can check while he's at it, so this could definitely sure. be valuable information. Yeah. 
types round two against the iron gall down to three of four party members but at least the healy one is still up that was a miss against the knight that seems like real real good news danny going with zap strats on the iron goals i i don't think their m def is low enough to support that strat I know it's better than 3 and 256. Not yeah. great odds, but hey, it works. Hey, it works. It works, it works. Crab Cakes reporting 56% chance? That's a yeah. lot higher than I thought. Expert is uh, one of the most accurate um, spells oh. in the game. Yeah, Expert. Sorry, oh, Zach, Expert. Expert. I, I thought you were saying yeah, Crab yeah. Odds. I was like, wow, that's, oh, yeah, that's no. like, way better than I thought. Not the only thing Zap has a 56% chance to hit is like imps. All right, Hypes did make it through uh, Warmax, so now we're on to Tiamat. <laughs> and Spell Zap finds the crystal! It's more fetches to get our chime to get our stupid moment. Hey, at least we've got exit. That's not horrid. Uh, question in chat, why not Bane? Because Iron Galls resist everything except for time and lightning. Yep. So Zap, Lit 3, and non-elemental spells are your best way to go with Iron Galls. 18% chance for Zap from Crab Cakes in chat. That's, that's a lot higher than I would have thought. That's pretty reasonable, actually. Oh, but Zap finds Water Tile, and we got level one ice three. This is oh, this is where I'm taking the flag. This is there the tile. This go. is it right here. Yeah, and they don't even have 400 HP. This is definitely the tile to go with. Yep. Uh, more oh. than 300 though. And whatever. We got two level one ice three casters. Just go until they're gone. It's faster than the Iron Galls. It's easier to get to than the um, our giant Agama. Doesn't matter. Just just camp. <laughs> Take what you can get. Yeah, stun touch on the waters, though. That's a little bit rough. Oh, but importantly, it's also inside Temple of Fiends, which means that yeah. like, you're also right here when you're when you've decided it's go time. Yep. Looks like Spell Zap decided it wasn't worth the trek over to Lafayne to go pick up that uh, Masmian, though. Mm -hmm. But he is going to just rock this Excal unless he finds something better. The Excal is really not that bad an option until Chaos. At Chaos, it loses a little bit of its luster, but with it being an Excalibur 4, I have a feeling that it's still going to be net positive and definitely a functional endgame weapon. Yeah, I think the, the fact that it's plus four makes it a little bit more bearable. The only issue I really have with the Excal versus uh, Mazza is that Mazza has, you know, a pretty pretty significant amount more hit percent on it and mm. a lot more crit percent by mm -hmm. base values. Well, I say a lot more. I guess it's not that much more, but Excal has a really bad crit rate. Yeah. Something, something, it's not honorable to crit your opponent in the face, thus knightly weapons can't have crit. Spells up, not quite content with the water, is going to do a little bit more digging, it looks like. Ooh. Stone Poison Catman is a no. Stone Poison Catman is even more of a no. As Hypes takes on the Kraken 1, how are we going to take our lovable Squid Boy down today? We're going to start with some Invis 2. Outgoing Test Swing. Two hits, 144. That's not a good amount of hits, and that's not a good amount of damage. Temper is going to help that a bit. Incoming Ink does ink things. Round 2. We're going to test swing again. We're going to try some temper. We're going to invis up some more temper. Incoming slow. Luckily, it dodged the knight. Invis 2 goes off. We're at two stacks of six. Swing. 
two hits for 113. Not much change, even after the tempers of last round. Two more tempers go off. We're going to try attacking in again. We're going to repeat the same round, but we're going to add in some luck, too. Outgoing test swing. More hits for 530. That's better. Temper goes off. Incoming fire, too. I count one party member that didn't really have good resistance to that, that being the red mage. Lot 2 goes off. Invis goes off. We're at three stacks of six. We're just going to keep going on evasion just in case Kraken gets huggy. Kraken tries to hold. Doesn't work. Outgoing swing. One hit for 141. Down goes Kraken 1. Four easy free shards. And Hypes' levels are looking pretty, really good. 30 on the night, high 20s the rest of the way. Not quite what I would call Topher capable, but pretty, really close. Yeah, Hypes is definitely getting pretty close, I would say. Uh, maybe like two to four levels from feeling comfortable. Needs a, a bit more shards, but uh, he and Chadbert definitely uh, on, on the uh, up and up as far as the, the shard count goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Danny has decided to forego the shards for now and has uh, focused on trying to get these levels. Uh, question in chat, do both players have to win or just one? In this year's co-op tournament, both players have to kill Chaos before the team is considered finished. And then is it sum of time or second player to cross the line ends timer? Uh, second player to cross the line ends timer. Uh, additional question in chat. Um, team Brig Brain Club still needs loot and key. Where were they? So the loot is at Canaria Castle from Princess Sarah. Big Brain Club has found Canaria Castle, but the person that found it did, was not the person that got the Garland kill, thus did not talk to Sarah, thus did not get loot. As for the key, was the key behind... Was that behind Q-Block? Uh, behind Q-Block was Matoya, and we haven't turned in the crystal to get the chime yet. He Never was mind. here in Star Room. Yeah, he is right here in Star Shape Room. Hypes is about to get it. Uh, Eyes with Nuke was also here in Star Shape Room. I yep. just got that too. Yep, Hype's finding out the bad news that Eyes are not at a premium today. Yeah. Ooh, hold on. Spells app just found some gas. Oh, he's in Topher now. This yeah. Is the gra gas Dragon tile. I got excited there for a second. <laughs> What are we looking at for levels? Top end of Spells Apps Party is at 33, bottom end's at 28. The tile, nothing to write home about. Validation? That's, that's nope. pretty respectable levels for, uh, oh, Ribbon 2. Oh, Validation Ribbon. 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 The good old Ribbo, Ribbo 2 and 20 bucks, but we'll take the Ribbon. That's the second Ribbon for Spell Zap, and I believe the second we found entirely, because I only remember seeing one. Yeah, it was just the one in the carry floor chest. Yeah. Uh, Tracker Luffy saying that that is correct. That is the second ribbon we've seen all seen. Behold the magic of randomized treasure. Less ribbons, more wear swords. Caleb in chat pointing out we've got an A rub shirt and a rub stick. We've got contradictory <laughs> magic items in, in play here. That's fine. <laughs> you you put both of those together and you have the unkillable light warrior. When an unstoppable force meets an immovable <laughs> object, dot dot dot. <laughs> Uh, Wizvamps with Stone Poison. 
and I believe Wiz Vamp Zombie D was an unrunnable encounter, or we just hoped that it was going to be easy experience, but it really wasn't. We're going to keep that Mage Petrified, probably until we get to this floor. Nope, we're just going to keep that Mage Petrified in general. We don't need no stinking second Mage. I mean, the one advantage of keeping that Mage Petrified is it means that more attacks are going to go on that Knight rather than Mages. It saves quite a bit of healing items that way. We have simultaneous orb lights on uh, Big Brain Club. We got some more shards going for hypes and Chad Burt. <laughs> Puts them at 23 and 24 respectively. No, sorry, 26. That was a, a four, uh, or or four shard fiend. Spell Zap, trying to make his way through the Earth Floor now. And Chadford is getting close to striking distance for uh, for Topher as far as being able to, to go in and get some information. Mm -hmm. Hypes finds Canaria Castle and finds the Princess. Team Big Brain Club is about to get their Big Brain Loot and Key. They just need a couple more shards, and they'll be able to get inside. Ooh, we got an opening nuke from Lich. Oh, that's adorable. I mean, you say that. There's nothing to say that he won't have a second one. Or, Ooh. or you know, a zap. Or a zap. Okay. All right. It's, it's official. We now have to take Lich seriously. Congratulations, Shadow. You've done the impossible. Yeah, I did it. So instead, so Spell Zap is going to go with Ultimate Disrespect Memes. We're going to X for Brack Lich 2. I still want this to work. I mean, it's got pretty good odds. He already landed the X for so. Oh, or, no, or, we're going to we X Disrespect him even more. And yeah, we're going to X, quad X. dead. <laughs> Thank you, Spell Zap. You're my hero now. <laughs> that was real good. I approve. 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Big Brain Club now has the crystal in hand, so if they want, they have the opportunity now to unlock Nolmund. Chadbert is going to get his final crystals here. That puts him up at the 28 mark. Those, yeah, those two shards should have hypes at the 28. Hypes is good to go. Danny went on a bit of a ribbon hunt, got the ribbon. Still needs some more shards, though. At 17, we're looking at needing all four fiend kills to get us the rest of the way to 28. Yeah, I don't think Danny has actually killed any fiends, so she actually could just go do that. Mm -hmm. Not a bad option at this point. No, they were all pretty close to top floor in their respective locations. Oh, meanwhile, Carrie too. Swung, took down the Red Mage. Knight retaliates for 800 damage. Down goes Carrie too. We're about to enter the water floor with what's likely to be our first major benchmark of this Topher, the Kraken 2. Yeah, definitely a, a boss that needs a little bit of respect, and we don't have the best resources to go up against it. No. Don't have Nuke in tow, don't have Fade in tow. Uh, we don't really have Evasion in tow. We have one Invis 2 shirt. Sure. 
we appear to be giving the Invis 2 shirt to the knight. And leaving him in the front. I have I have doubts about the strategy, but that's no, fine. Prove me wrong. There's no no time for defenses. It's time for power. Kraken 2's uh, power. Saying. <laughs> 15 right. hits for a whopping 1400 damage. Uh, you're right that we don't have time for defense. <laughs> that that part you were right about. We're gonna have to come up with a non-white mage based plan. All right. Temper goes off. Invis 2 goes off. I believe that has us at three stacks. Kraken takes pity on us. Does a little lightning 2. Does lightning 2 things. Outgoing swing. Does some amount of damage. It was a red mage with a nice 5 sword. I'm going to assume it was one hit, one damage. Next round. Uh, Invis 2 shirt goes off. Lock 2 goes off. We're real not happy about the amount of outgoing melee swings that are connecting. Bane takes down the black mage. We're down to two people left. Kraken pretty merciless so far. We're going to wall that knight. We're going to test swing. Three hits for 518 is good, but that slow too is the opposite of good. It's about as far from good as we can get. Does that red mage have fast? Nope. We're choice some lock twos, I guess. Quadex out of Kraken 2. Ineffective swing. Two hits for 636. Down goes Kraken 2. Yeah, unfortunately that fast was level six in like the third slot, so that is only available to black wizards in this scene. Yeah. But life is pretty free at level one, so everybody's back on their feet except the poor Black Wizard. <laughs> I think we waited until now to do life, because there's nothing else going for us at that level one. Interesting choice of who to use to cast uh, that life one spell. I have a feeling that we're going to see some mute shenanigans at some point. But... In the meantime, we have a Tia 2. We're going to try what I believe was some fast, some wall, and I, an Invis 2 shirt, and how about some temper? Incoming punch. Well, we don't have to worry about that character anymore. Fast goes off. Invis 2 goes off. Wall goes off on the night. We're going to try some temper. Invis 2 goes off. Two stacks of six. Temper goes off. Invis goes off on the white mage. The white mage is at three of six. Ice two does ice two things. Invis two shirt. How about some lock two? Maybe, maybe some brack? No, maybe not some brack. Maybe some more invis. Invis two shirt. The party is at three of six. White mage at four of six. Tia does a one tiny little punch for 29 babby damage. Lock two. Believe that was ineffective? I missed that. But the Brack 4 stick doesn't matter how much evasion was or wasn't there because Brack sees us through, borking into pizzas, beyond the chaos. Yeah, we've got lock and lock 2 auto hit, so... Meanwhile, so during that during that fight, both of the Big Brain Club are in Topher. We've already got Chadbert versus Lich 2. Danny still on the hunt for shards as Spells App is about to pull chaos. One last look at the inventory. We've got the Black Mage dual-wielding Arab shirts. We're going to put him up front. Here we go. It's chaos time. Let's begin. We're going to consider our options carefully, but we're going to settle on Temper. We're going to go with the melee strats on the Knight. We're going to invis the knight, and we're going to invis two. We're putting everything into this knight. One evasion stack across the board, two on the knight. Big, pun big, big punch out of chaos. We're trying some more temper, some invis. How about some more invis two? Temper goes off. Fire three. I don't think that mage resists it, but the rest of the party does. Invis on the white mage, invis two on the rest of the party. The two important characters at four of six. The mage, the black mage at two of six. Next round, temper, brack, no, some invis, a little bit more invis two. Stun, the black mage is paralyzed. Invis goes off, invis two goes off. White mage at five of six, no, white mage at six of six. Uh, knight at five of six. We're gonna top off, we're gonna do some more evasion. Stop, doesn't stop. Invis two goes off, invis goes off. 
We've got all the evasion we need. What are we doing? We're going to invis up that thar. We're, we're just going to give everyone in the party invisibility. Maximum evasion stats because three hits for like over 300 damage was just a monstrous amount of damage. There's also potential that this is an information dive for Spells app just to give Danny all the information that's necessary about how much there could possibly be in here. There was an expert attempt. I don't know if it was successful or not, but we've switched over to Brack strats, so I'm led to believe it was. Brack staff, ineffective. Test swing. Six hits for 92 damage. That's not much. We're going to try some Brack. And we're going to cure for the Black Mage? Maybe not, because that thing just went down. Cure 4. Nope, against the White Mage. That that was probably the better target. We're going to try some more Brack Staff. Brack. Nah. Crack? Nah. Invis 2. Yeah. We're going to go into the next round. We're going to try some Brack, and maybe some not Brack. Ink goes off. Brack Staff. Ineffective. Nothing happens. Ink does ink things. Dan's going to continue waiting as the Brack Staff is ineffective. Is this going to be a mean kill? No, it's not, because we see a sword swinging for 6 hits, 247 damage, and Brack does nothing. Incoming Blaze doesn't do much because we've got two protected characters. Let's try some more Brack Staff. Ineffective. I still want this Brack to work, but I really don't want that crack to work. They're kind of almost nearly the same chance right now. Brack still doing nothing. Incoming Lightning 2 does Lightning 2 things. I haven't seen very many dangerous spells yet. Brack does nothing. We're going for the meme kill. Brack, ineffective. <laughs> Chaos gets a meme kill of his own. Rubs the night out of existence. All right, well, I guess we're committed to memes at this point. Let's. It's Brack or nothing. Here we go. Spam Brack until it works. It's Brack, ineffective. Ink, ineffective. Brack, ineffective. Punch, super crit. Down goes Spell Zap. This was not the chaos to bring meme strats to. This was the that chaos to so take well. seriously. <laughs> that did not go so well. <laughs> I, I'm actually a little bit surprised that Spells App didn't cure for the Black Mage in order to remove that stun, so we could have gotten off a few more tempers on the night. I think that would have been uh, something that, that could have potentially turned that fight around for him. Possibly. So while that's happening, uh, Hypes and Chadbert in Topher, kind of deep in Topher, Chaffer, uh, Chadbert on Tia 2's floor, Hypes about to enter Kraken 2's floor, Danny is still looking for some shards, about to take down Warmech and behind it Tia 1, which will get Danny all the shards she needs before she can enter Topher. This is going to be a real nail biter. It is now the big brain club is in the big brain driver's seat. It is their race to lose at this point. Chadbert trying melee strats against Tia 2. Four hits for 164, not as effective as it could be. Still gonna try the evasion stats because good gosh golly geez, that was a big hit. Danny through Warmech onto the easy peasy Tia 1. Chadbert versus Tia 2, still invising up. Hypes versus Kraken 2. Fasting up, invising up, trying to survive one of those melee swings. We'll certainly know if Kraken tries a melee swing because one of those characters will not be there anymore. Chadbert still making progress against Tia 2. More progress than previously with some good hits. Kraken with the Bane. Down goes the White Mage, down goes the Black Mage. A single hit for 155 in retaliation. Kraken with the slow 2. Did that hit? I don't know if that hit or not. It was ineffective, but uh, Chadbert does get through Tia 2. Oh, it's it's up to Hypes. Hypes has to ma maintain momentum for the team through Kraken 2. He gets through there. Let's really hope that this knight has life. What do we got? Oh, the Red Mage has it too. But the White Mage is down to a single cure for left. Yeah, I'm not sure I would have used uh, two of the White Mage's Cure 4s there. Mm -hmm. Danny, going on a shopping trip, getting some last-minute spells. Spells app, already back to Lich 2. Spells app knows to take this Lich 2 seriously, Horror of Horrors, as Chadbert pulls up 
to chaos. Ooh, Hypes. Lich gets some nasty nuke rolls, and uh, Spellzap actually loses the Black Mage and White Mage. Oh, Spellzap in trouble against this absolute farce oh. of a Lich, too. But Spellzap finally through Lich, too, as Hypes still making progress against Tia, too. Chadbert doing a final rearrange of the equipment, making sure we absolutely have everything in the correct place, everyone in the correct place before we pull this chaos. And I'm looking at the hit points on Danny's side. Danny's got some very leveled characters. The wall of Danny closing in on the big brain club. As chaos fight begins, we're going to start with a novelty, casting Invis 2 out of our spell list instead of lifting a shirt. We're also going to lift the shirt. Chaos starts with Ink, does Ink things. The Knight swings, one hit for 38 damage. First Invis 2 goes off. Second Invis 2 goes off. Chat pointing out that Tia 2 had Cure 4. Oh, gosh. So we're going to get our third Invis 2 cast. Incoming Blaze. Pretty respectable damage to the mages, not so much to the knight. Outgoing swing. Four hits for 262. Invis 2 shirt goes off. Lock 2 goes off. Wall. The red mage is walled. What else are we walling? We're doing something to the knight. We're going to try some more Lock 2. We're going to try some more Invis 2 as Hypes pulls Chaos. It's now a drag race between Hypes and Chadbert, the two teammates, to see who can kill Chaos first. If they both get there in a timely manner, they will be handing the Crescent Lake Party Planners their first loss ever. We'll go with ever. Yeah, I mean, they went undefeated all last year, so, you know. <laughs> Hypes continuing evasion. Chadbert, that was a melee swing. Nine hits for only 166. Get that guy some tempers. Going to need some more cure four to top off our health. Maybe some tempers as Danny has entered Topher. Spells up on the fire floor. Cure 4 goes off. Outgoing 9 hits for 665. That's the amount of damage we're looking for from Chad Burt. Let's see if Hypes can match it. Hypes still doing some defensive buffs. Stun misses. Hype swing. 3 hits for 364. Fewer hits, more power. Chad Burt still swinging. Only around 25 damage. But the knight steps up. 10 hits for 1,391 damage, and Chadbert is the first on screen to kill Chaos. Will Hypes be right behind? Hypes is down one party member. Well, we got the important one up. Five hits for 387. Gonna need more than that. Gonna need more power, more lock. Incoming punch misses. Lock two. Easy to hit. Swing. Five hits for 335. Lock two. Just a little bit less evasion on this. Chaos will be good to go. Big swing. Five hits for 569. Down goes Chaos. The Big Brain Club takes game two. With an official FFR bot time of one hour, 48 minutes, and one second. GG to our oversized brain boys. And GG. That was very well executed. They were both in there at the same time and both pulled it through. Bell's app on their heels, back on Kraken 2 as Danny is pulling in Lich 2 as well. Kraken going a little bit easy on Spell's app, throwing out the ink. Dan misses though. Another swing gets a crit for 169. We're going to see if we can get the Big Brain Club in here in an interview in a little bit. In the meantime, the Crescent Lake party planners are looking to storm Topher with a vengeance. Two hits for 638. That's more like it. Kraken goes down.
All right, so we got Crescent Lake Party Planners healing up. Zap takes a couple steps and get an gets ambushed by some <laughs> sharks and a big eye. Sure. Waterfloor just has to have one final word to say. Yep. Waterfloor is the worst floor in Topher. Change my mind. Uh, I can't because you're right. <laughs> All right, Dan Swing, we got three hits for 229 damage. Got some evasion going out in Viz 2 and Viz fast. I'll work on bringing the pain to this team at 2, which we now know has a cure for. Got some Brax Strats going out, more evasion going out. Seven hits for 361. Need a couple more good hits like that, and this Tia can go down. Try the Brax Strats. Ineffective. Six percent of the time, it works every time. Oh, time to reset the clock. <laughs> Brack is ineffective. Five hits, crits for three hundred and forty-six. Another six hits, got another three hundred and twenty-four damage. Going for some lock strats here, trying to get a few more hits on. Big Punch takes out the Black Wizard. Dan swings back with a vengeance. Seven hits, 736 damage. That's a good swing, and see. Tia goes down. Dang, big swing. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, power. Literally the last <laughs> step. Gets, <laughs> gets barraged by a pack of four worms, but we are on to Chaos of War once again. Spells up knows what he's in for this time. Going to bring his Black Mage back. Some last minute healing, and we are going for it. And we're joined in the booth by one half of the biggest brainest club. Mr. Chad Barrett. How's it going, man? Oh, I'm there. Coming off of this pretty shocking <laughs> thing there. <laughs> And we're joined by the other half of the Super Brain Club, Mr. Hypes Nova. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't sound excited I'm, or anything. I'm, I'm the one that has the monotone, not you. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, uh, I was just kind of disappointed because I forgot to put on the Mazza for Chaos, and I thought I was going to like do poorly. All right, well, we will get to that in just a moment. We've got Spells App back on Chaos. Uh, he already took a wipe to Chaos. So this is his second attempt now to take down the big boy. Got an Invis 2 shirt coming out. Trying to work that evasion back up. Dan gets six hits for 179 damage. Making some progress. Tempers come out. Swings go out. for 300 with a crit. We're still needing to get that evasion up. That Chaos Swing just took off about 300 HP from the night. Temper lands. The final Temper that we've got, another Invis 2 shirt coming out. It's turn order on the Temper. Knight swings in. 7 hits, 756 damage. Dan's looking to be in good shape for this fight now. Going for extra Brack meme strats again. <laughs> Eight hits for 840. I don't think we've got time for memes. Dan is going to get the job done in time. It's just one more hit like that. Danny's on team at two. As poor Shadow gets punched to death. <laughs> Really, Zap? Really? You you know you can just, like, swing and kill him at this point. There you go. You got your X for... Is he going to go for Fear Strats? No, I think no, he's going for Brack going Strats. For Brack Strats. Oh, yeah. Well, I think he knew the jig's up, so he's just having fun. <laughs> 
That's fair, but this is exactly what cost him his wife <laughs> on the last dive. All right, yep. but he does get the one last swing in, and chaos goes down. Just need one more person to finish this up. There was a brack stick. There was a brack yep. stick. I oh, nice. believe there actually might have been two of them. I'm not sure. I know there was one. Well, there was one in Dwarf Armory, but I thought the other one that we saw was much earlier than that. Uh, the one I remember seeing was Dwarf Armory. Okay, maybe I was just incorrect and saw them both pick it up separately. Yeah, we didn't have the key by the time we turned in all the door stuff, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a debacle. I was like, we don't have the looter key, and we're like an hour 20 in. <laughs> we're like, what did we not do? We, we were kind of a mess... All right, Danny on the last fight of the game, Fast and Tepper going out on Fizz, and Fizz 2 coming out to bring up that party evasion. We're going for the melee strats with the Maza. 10 hits for 393 damage. This is definitely the sword to bring to this fight. Yep. More Tempers. We are just going straight for the Juggler this time. Mm -hmm. Don't need to worry about lock. Don't need to worry about expert. Just swing. All temper all the time. Except the one person that doesn't have it. She's going to use cure four. Stun comes out. Ineffective. Five hits for 800. One more hit like that. And this is going to be GG. Lock two for the lulls. And eight hits for 1,200 damage. <laughs> GG as Danny crosses the finish line. And that's going to be that. Crescent Lake Party Planners finished with an official FFR bot time of one hour, 56 minutes, and 20 seconds. GG to them. Let's see if we can get them in here for an interview. Yeah, so realistically, this was a very close race. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, Danny was already in Topher by the time that you guys were uh, on, I think uh, Chadbert was already on Chaos, but I think uh, Hypes was only on uh, to get to at that point. Yeah, I was a fiend behind him. I was trying to catch up. He was giving me like updates on where he was. I'm like, oh, I could, I could beat him. I did not. <laughs> I was giving you spells and stuff that were being cast. Oh, yeah. He said Chaos has a vein, so I just dumped like six lock twos in there. <laughs> okay. I said a little bit, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> we are now joined by Crescent Lake Party Planners. GG to all four of you. That was a wonderful race. Very close. What's up, uh, y'all? Ups and downs. What's up? There was an up in that seat because I'd like to know where. Pretty sure it was uh, all down. It was everything <laughs> being nice. So, a quick interview. What Hello. happened? <laughs> we, we just kept dying. <laughs> every every couple of minutes, like you, d d d d all you would hear was like, "I'm somewhere." Well, I wiped again. Oh, where were you now? Well, I wiped, so it don't matter. Wiped again. That was the story of the whole first half of this, which is me <laughs> dying continuously over and over and over and over. That was that was and my over. Uh, first game. <laughs> And but, over. But come again. on, I, I gave you level and, one ice three. What more could you ask for? Yeah, and like yeah. six pounds. The trash tiles were amazing. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. I knew I knew twenty minutes in, I was like, dude, we so lost this. <laughs> There's no way. There was no way. By the time so, he was ready and I'd wipe so many times, every time I had something or like espers or whatever they were, the seed. I like I would have a bunch and then I'd wipe somewhere and it just I I, I knew a good twenty minutes in I thought it was like we so lost there's no way we were winning this. I, you might be surprised, but you guys were kind of leading the whole way through. It, it was like kind of the end. It was the wall of big brain coming to like close in on you guys. And when when spells app wiped, that was kind of like that they took over and they just both cleared it on that dive. Yep. Yeah. Beep, beep. Yeah, but once we figured out where we were supposed to actually go, yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't have had, like stuff four together. places we never so, saw. Here's like, a fun story. I'm <laughs> I'm looking at the tracker, 
And I'm like, wow, I need like seven shards. Do you know where any are? And I look at the tracker and like one fourth of it is still blank and we're an hour 20 and I'm like, what did you forget to fill out? <laughs> it was Canary a Castle. I'm yeah. assuming I'm assuming like Melmond was in what Mirage? That yeah, was Mel be Melmond my had to be Mirage, but no. none of you guys went and actually yeah. checked it. Our, nobody our problem, nobody wanted Mer Melmond. Our our entire time. Like, our entire conversation was basically um I wiped again and where was that again? Because um note to us, game three, take notes, because those are those are helpful. Because we sure <laughs> did in this one. Um we kind of, I mean, I had some, some rough draft stuff going on, you know. That's the same excuse I've used when I don't take notes. <laughs> so yeah, more than anything, I was surprised that nobody checked uh, Mirage to, to see what the spells were in Melmond, because at we that point... We never the chime! Yeah, yeah we, we couldn't find the chime. Yeah, where but you had, the you had the crystal they, and you knew where Matoya was. Yeah, but it was deep. Nah. It was deep. That's for chumps. <laughs> Five, yeah, but there was a 50% chance that it had nuke. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. But by the time we had gotten that far and figured it out, it was just like, I'm going down there. <laughs> nuke was actually uh, a guy uh, level 8. Yeah. That, oh, I, okay. I, I thought I, you know... I, I hadn't seen anybody check that. I thought in honor of my partner who, who... I told him not to check it, and he checked it anyways. I checked him at Guided Invis 2. It saved me. Level 8! Oh. In this too. Yeah, it got me four casts, which was enough. Well, all right. <laughs> all you need. I felt I felt real smart, and I was just like, no, I'm just I'm doing it not on my partner who completely just goofed on his carry fight last time, and I was like, I've got muscle, be fine doing carry, and I start swinging. I'm like, wait, what is my fighter equipped with? Because I know that's not a muscle. Yeah, you equipped the Great Axe. I saw I you know, pick up the I, I, nice. <laughs> You went to your menu and equipped the Great Axe, and I was like, Danny, no, that's not your Maza. I went to equip it, and I didn't realize I equipped the wrong one until I was fighting Carrie, and I went, oh. Oh, this isn't going to go well. And it sure didn't. I think I saw that floor many, 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 many times. It was one of the lots of places that I wiped a lot. Um... <laughs> What did Zapped I do on his first uh, Topher dive? Getting punched for like 500 damage. No. <laughs> you died to memes. <laughs> well, that was meme. -y. Well, because I knew I was a whole wipe ahead of Danny. So I was like, why not? Sure. It's I team mean, spirit. You just wanted fair. to do it with me. I wanted to raise my spirits. It was a morale boost. <laughs> That's fair. But you definitely could have cleared that chaos in sure. your first dive. Sure. Yeah, because I had no problem with him. Dead. Like, I don't know if there was just something I didn't see a whole lot of, or he just was nicer to me than he was to everybody else. But like... Well, I didn't put a ribbon on my fighter, and then he got rubbed. And then I was trying to brack stick him, and then he punched the white mage for like four something through evasion and killed it. Yeah. Shout outs to the Frosties. They didn't let me get past my partner in Tover. <laughs> I had two turns of can't run followed by death touch. Ooh, I didn't see that. That was, that was pretty hot. <laughs> well, I, I was slow because I was taking notes for you. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I've got like HPs and spells. Although you managed to find a cure for that, I didn't see. <laughs> yeah. All right, well. All right. What, what thoughts do each of you guys have uh, going into game three? Let's start with tonight's winners, Big Brain Club. You can take one, you can take two, let's go! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I have to play for a third game. <laughs> My scheduling, not like this. <laughs> and uh, Crescent Lake Party Planners, uh, rousing comeback words. Um, I'm going to recharge my Brack Stick, um, make sure it works next time, and then, uh, you know, just hopefully we'll maybe take it a little bit slower on the early game, get a couple more levels, and get a better start. I don't know. So, <laughs> I, I would say we're gonna we're gonna do smart things. Like we're gonna take better notes. So I'm not like asking constantly to where something is because we don't remember. And you know I'm not gonna die a lot. I'm gonna be but chances are that's just not going to be the case in Look, my note strategy hinges on us actually clearing places when we find it 
And hey, my notes were never great either. So it's at this Dan point it's team strategy. We don't. Danny, do would you that. say that your problem was too many white mages? Well, I mean, probably. Yeah, it does feel real bad taking one. <laughs> you had more than one. No, I had one. That was the problem. What? No, that's too not many. the problem. You guys I, are wrong. I, I graduated from the Fizzle School of <laughs> FFR. We don't we don't do white mages. Okay, yeah, have fun in this flag said that. <laughs> I mean, I ran fighter red double black <laughs> all last year in, in the co-op, and it was more brutal than these flags. Uh, but like you're not in it, so we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. You got me there. Alright, I guess we'll uh I guess we'll move on to final thoughts then. Uh, our winners, Team Big Brain Club. I thought we already gave our final thoughts. Yeah, that was the oh. oh, Before man. we did say that, I'll say GG to you, to the Crystal Lake Party players. No, that is my final thought. All right. <laughs> uh, Shadow, final thoughts? I just want to give a huge shout out to Randomania 2. Thanks for partnering with us for this broadcast and uh, all the other broadcasts that we do. Uh, big thanks to Cyrenus, who was restreaming for us, and Luffy, who was doing tracking for us. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody in chat for joining us. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've been involved, and it was fun to come back and do this. So thank you, Fizzle, for inviting me to, to come and do commentary with you. It was a blast. Yeah. Big, big thank you to our runners for putting on one heck of a race. Go ahead and give our followers, or give our runners a follow uh watch them on their streams they're all very entertaining people and huh. for everyone here at the ffr community and for everyone on randomania my name is lorfin borfin and we'll see you next time have a good night <laughs>